Jake O'Donnell and Tommy Nunez. The Celtics come in with a record of 40 wins and 12 defeats on the season. They have a seven-game lead over Philadelphia. The 76ers winning tonight, 114 to 109 over New Jersey. There you see our officials, Jake O'Donnell on the left, Tommy Nunez on the right. A crowd of 20,000 is going to be on hand here in the Kingdom this evening. The top crowd of the season for the Sonics. They're 27 and 23, 20 and 6 at home, including 11 consecutive wins at home. The Celtics are 18 and 7 on the road. Starting for Seattle, Tom Chambers and Reggie King are the forwards. Jack Sigma is the center. Gus Williams, there's Sigma. Gus Williams and Al Wood are the guards. The Sonics have beaten the Celtics seven of the last nine times they've played. And since 1977, they're 13 and four against the Celtics. And we're underway here in Seattle. The Sonics right away missing the first shot. Gus Williams getting the offensive rebound. And it's two nothing Seattle. Celtics with a 10-point win last night, 125 to 115 over the Golden State Warriors at Golden State. All right, Gerald Henderson for the Celtics, and now Larry Bird. He had a 17-assist night last night. Dennis Johnson, baseline, ties the game at 2-2. Johnson, a big favorite here in Seattle from his playing days with the Sonics when he was a member of their world championship team. So we're tied at two in the early going. We play 30 seconds in Seattle. We'll have a telecast Sunday night as well from Portland. Sigma offensive rebound. No, that's going to be a loose ball foul on Reggie King. the first team foul on the Supersonics here in the first minute of play. It is two to two. All right, Johnson, you see Al Wood guarding him. He's six, six player, played two years in the NBA so far. Bird from outside, no, and six for the rebound. Gus Williams has always had some of his better games against the Celtics. Tom Chambers coming up a bit short. Good defensive pressure by Bird. And Henderson pushes it up for the Celtics. Gerald takes it all the way. Nice runner, but he missed the shot. Chambers out, let stolen by Dennis Johnson. It is 2-2 two two right now. They try to go low to Paris, clapped away. Sonic's one of the better teams in the league at stealing the basketball. They're averaging nearly nine steals a game. Sigma off the offensive boards. And now Gus Williams for Seattle. Sigma has it stripped, and the ball will be off the Celtics. It'll still be Seattle ball with 14 seconds showing on the shot clock for Seattle in this possession. Looking at Al Wood from the University of North Carolina Tar Heels. Now Gus Williams, Wood's backcourt partner. Wood came over here in the trade with San Diego. From the corner, Sigma. Four to two, Seattle. Henderson back for the Celtics. We have 10 minutes to play in the first quarter at the Kingdom with a crowd of about 20,000 on. Henderson, after a nice fake, takes it in the paint, misses the shot. Celtics not getting any second shots as Sigma is doing a good job off the boards, but he traveled with it that time. And it'll be the Boston ball with 9.59 to play here in the first quarter. The Celtics will put it in play. KC with instructions to his troops. Larry Bird to inbounds for the Celtics. Sunday night from Portland, we'll have our second telecast of this Pacific Coast trip. Bird from the corner, his first time. And it's 4-4. Four to four. Larry with 16 points, 17 assists, and credited with nine rebounds last night at Golden State, although he had a better night off the boards than they officially gave him credit for. Wood, now low to Reggie King, who's 6'6", a bulky 6'6". Wood from outside, partially deflected by Johnson. Nice defensive play. Dennis Johnson. Maxwell had a great game last night with 24 points. Ball stripped by the Sonics. And they push it back up the floor. Chambers missed the shot. Harris the rebound. Robert with 28 points and 14 rebounds last night. Maxwell all the way. Back of a move, Goose. Oh, Max can get it in. Once the monsters, Kenny, he, uh, he penetrates about as effectively as a man his size in the league. Just uses his body so well. All right, Sigma outside, and now Al Wood on the baseline, again deflected by Johnson. I'll tell you, I think Dennis is uh, a little up to this up. one. Wow, he, uh, a couple of outstanding defensive plays last couple of times down on Wood. Wood came over here from San Diego along with Chambers uh, started this year. Wood hits on the baseline, and it's a... 
it's the six ball game as quickly Henderson comes back for the Celtics. Now DJ from outside. And Chambers that time with the rebound. It is off of Seattle. It'll be Celtics ball. The crowd does not agree. Well, Jack Sickman. There it is. Jack Sickman needs that kind of help on that kid Chambers. He's 6'11", and he really hasn't rebounded up to his potential this year. That's one of the reasons why Seattle is had a great game last night as we mentioned against the Warriors down in Oakland where the Celtics won 125 to 115. All right, Celtics are leading 8 to 6 here, 8 minutes to play in the first quarter. Wood on the baseline, stripped by Johnson, his third outstanding defensive play, Kuz. I think we've got our uh, Getty winner already. Oh, Ben is doing a fine job. There it is. He's got Wolf, uh, excuse me, uh, Wood talking to himself a little bit. Well, that's three times he's picked Wood's pocket. Williams has it stolen right out of his hands by Gerald Henderson. Ahead to the Chief, who is about half a court ahead of six. Bird in the lane, nice double five. Larry Bird. Celtics defensively, Cruz, looking very sharp here in the early going. Well, you know, all it takes is one guy to kind of set the tempo. And I think Dennis is... Uh, obvious aggressive defensive stance he's adopting earlier is going to be contagious and probably be, be picked up by the other four. And a foul in low on Cedric Maxwell. That is the first Celtics team foul of the first quarter. Matter of fact, each team has one team foul as soon as an O'Donnell let him play. Williams on the season for Seattle, averaging 18 points a game. Now Sigma, a little bit beyond his range, missed the shot, but Chambers tipped it in. Chambers took off a 28-point performance. Uh, 22nd Wednesday, he has a lot of... They won very well, impressively on all over Washington, so this kid's just been installed in the starting lineup, and uh, he looks like he's ready to play some ball. The 22nd timeout taken by the Celtics here, with 7.21 to play in the first quarter. The Celtics are leading 10-8, as they have hit the second game of this West Coast, Pacific Coast, uh, Pacific Division trip. And this is the toughies, this whole situation here out west where they're playing good teams number one that's tough it up number two it's the three hour time change of course is always a bother particularly early in the trip and uh, then you get down to los angeles and san diego and it's sunny and warm and the guys sometimes stop thinking about playing ball it's always been a problem for all eastern teams that have to come out west in practically every sport into the corner with it. Celtics leading by two. Maxwell trying to post up Reggie King. Max has got three inches on him. Missed the shot. Parrish cannot control, and Gus Williams has it. That's where the uh, Celtics have to exploit an obvious advantage on that offensive board. As we said on top, if Robert could keep Sickler out of there, uh, Bird, Max, and McHale should have quite an advantage if they hang tough on that board. Here's Chambers coming through for two. Parrish, a bullet pass ahead to Gerald Henderson for a sneak away. Great pass by Barrett. Well, I'll tell you, this is where, if they want to release that top man when the ball goes up, because the top, given the board advantage, uh, should be able to control their defensive board. If they want to release that guy, they're going to pick up three or four of those quick breakaway hoops. The Celtics uh, averaging 46 rebounds a game. The Sonics, that's their weak point. They're averaging just 41 rebounds a game. Bird ahead to Maxwell, but led him a little bit too much. <laughs> My microphone wires all tangled up in Kuz's shoes here. We're going to take a break. How could my dainty 13 get in the way of your... 6.24 to go in the quarter. The Celtics are up a pair. Back at Seattle, Gil Santos and Bob Cousy, 12 to 10. The Celtics are leading. Celtics have hit uh, 6 of 12 from the floor here in the early going. Seattle 5 out of 16. It'll be a Seattle ball. As Al Wood and Gus Williams remain the guards, Jack Sickma in the middle, Reggie King, and Tom Chambers remain the forward. Neither team has made a substitution as of yet. All right, Williams and now Reggie King came over from Kansas City just uh, prior to the start of the season. Now Sickma and Williams, they swing it around. Low to Wood, and they post him up low, and he hits two to tie the game. Gerald Henderson comes breezing back up into the front court quickly. I think he had a notion of going with it, but Williams came out quickly to pick him up. Bird from about 18. Up. 14 to 12, Celtics. 
Well, we've seen Dennis post up enough guards. That's one advantage of having a guard his size. Al Wood at 6'6". Six, six, he's got a little bit of a, of a height advantage on Dennis. So you're going to see them sending him in there, Kate. Here's a guy who's not much of an offensive threat, Reggie King. We have a foul called on Robert Parrish. Parrish committing his first personal. And it is the Celtics' second team foul. I'll put Reggie King at the line. put Reggie King at the foul line. King is averaging eight points a game. And foul shooting is not as strong shooting. 65% free throw shooter. Look at the three guys. Three of their starters are over 80%. King is their weakest foul shooter. They're not shooting bad from the line of the team. They're shooting. We started to say a moment ago, he came over from San Diego along with Al Wood. Pretty good deal for the uh, Well, yeah, they're both in a starting lineup. They gave up Donaldson, good backup uh, center, who was playing first thing center now at Walton out, and uh, Kelsa, who's uh, well, so, so forward. But they gave up their first round draft. Come back to haunt them, although they're up there high enough this year where if they finish uh, seventh or eighth, Maxwell. Maxwell taking King to school on that one with four and a half minutes to go in the quarter at 18 to 18 right now. Celtics had a big first quarter last night at Golden State. Cooled off in the second, came on to win the game in the fourth quarter. Partially deflected. Celtics push it up quickly. Johnson to Bird on the fly. Look at that move by Bird, and he gets rushed underneath. Whoa. He's up and okay and ready to go to the fly line. I tell you, I thought he was going to really be his first. Really get hurt on that one. Wood a watch this. There's the Dennis Johnson lead pass. Leads him just slightly too much, but Bird's able to catch up, but he's not able to make it on the strong side of the basket. He takes it across, and that's when he uh, collides with Wood there. Larry shooting two. He's averaging 23 and a half points a game, just under 10 rebounds, six and a half assists, 100 steals. He's in the top 10 in the NBA in scoring, steals. By the way, in free steals. throw percentage. Uh, rather than free throws, yeah, he's sixth in steals. Up to 87 percent. Foul called on Henderson, which will be the Celtics' fourth team foul. And that foul on number 43. First one on Gerald Henderson. But still a possession foul. Christ, that uh, Seattle seems anxious to another steal. Good hands by Max. Despite Seattle is. Uh, running as much as they are. There's Lenny Wilkins, the fine coach. Just went over, over his 500th win. Youngest coach in the NBA able to do that, by the way, this year. Not too long ago, as a matter of fact. Johnson from outside buries it. And it's 22 to 18. Celtics take a four-point lead. Celtics play Portland on Sunday night. Then they go down to uh, San Diego, Los Angeles, and Phoenix a week from Sunday to complete this Pacific Division trip. Here's Chambers from outside. Celtics doing an excellent job off the defensive board. They are not allowing Seattle any second shots at all. Bird, downtown. No, weak side rebound to King. Out quickly to Gus Williams. Oh, what a great play by Dennis Johnson. They're going to call it goaltending. Well, he dropped it against the backboard. Yep. If the ball, the hand, and the backboard take a look, are all there simultaneously. Well, you can't really tell on the replay. 
But if, uh, if it's trapped, uh, the call is good one. Maxwell and the Celtics again with a four-point lead. They're going to Max quite a bit because they've got a three-inch advantage with Max there, so a bit of a mismatch on King. And I would imagine they want to take advantage of that as much as they can. Fine fall away by uh, Williams inside matches Max's basket. Uh, uh, yeah, I think this year, uh, other than the rebounding weakness that Seattle obviously has, they're giving up a couple of games to the opponent. Uh, here it is. Take a peek at that Williams fall away. Gerald, as you can see, does not like the fall. Uh, their weakness, in my opinion, at least, is, uh, you know, at the forward position. Uh, they gave away Shelton, who was inconsistent, but up there, he could be a bear under that board when he wanted to be, and I think Sixman needed that kind of help. Uh, with Brains and Reggie King, and even Chambers. Chambers looks pretty good so far, but, you know, King and Brains are not going to blow you away. All right, the Celtics have taken a timeout with 2.48 to go here in the first quarter. All right, there's Robert Parrish, and we'll have Dennis Johnson at the foul line for the Celtics. Also, the, uh, the Celtics have made a change uh, with Danny Ainge coming into the ball game at guard, replacing Gerald Henderson. And Seattle's first Dennis substitution Dennis at guard, downtown Freddie Brown, replacing Al Wood. At the line, DJ Dennis Johnson, averaging just under 13 points a game. Freddie Brown uh, getting back into action in the last game with a superb performance. Uh, after being out with a broken nose that he sustained in practice here for a while. But he's got about as good a range as any player in the league. I'll tell you, he's been bombing good sure, as they say, downtown for uh, 12, about 12 years now, right? This is his 13th. All right, it's 26 23 Celtics. 239 left to play in the first quarter from Seattle. King, and now here's Brown. Sigma over Parrish, no. Celtics do not allow a second shot, but it's into the hands of Chambers. Well, probably shouldn't allow that to happen. 6 11, 11 man should not be able to come over and slip a guard. However, Freddie Brown gives it right back. All right, Ainge and Johnson now the Celtics backcourt combination as you look at DJ. Sigma, on the other hand, is awfully quick. So, six -11. so there's the alley-oop. Parrish, after a fake, misses the shot. Bird offensive rebound, but Sickler comes away with it. Yeah, he showed quick hands again that time. That was a Sickler uh, strip there of Riley uh, Bird's rebound. All right, Ainge ahead to Bird. Celtics leading by three. They try to go low to Maxwell. Nice job. A great pass by Bird. The Celtics have their biggest lead of the ball game. Five points with a minute and 40 to go in the first quarter. Absolutely. I'm sure Max would want to get credit to Larry for that one. Created the shot for uh, Max. Traveling Gall and Gus Williams. Celtics are putting good defensive pressure on Seattle here in this first quarter. Good too. job by Danny Ainge there. Overplaying Williams to his right. He prefers the right, obviously. He's got boy, that overwhelming blinding speed. So if you're not away, they'll go by you either way. But that time he tried to fight the pressure and pick up the uh, foul. Offensive foul called on Cedric Maxwell. And that's Cedric's uh, second personal foul of the basketball game. We have a minute and 25 to go in the first quarter. Jake O'Donnell and Tommy Nunez calling them a little close uh, to start the game out. Now, the first four or five minutes, they weren't calling anything at all. All right, Sigma with Parrish on him. Tipped up and in by Tom Chambers. Well, he's 6'11". Yeah, that's the second time they've allowed him in there. Also, uh, Chambers should not be giving, given a 6'11", obviously, that kind of flexibility. Bird from outside gets the two back for the Celtics. And Boston holds on to that five-point lead, which equals, as we said, their biggest. Chambers is their second best uh, rebounder, by the way. Sigma leads the team easily with 563. Chambers with 317. Only 125 off the offensive board. And he's got a couple already tonight. From way outside, Freddie Brown. And a foul is going to be called on Dennis Johnson. Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale comes in for the Celtics, and he replaces Larry Bird. DJ picks up the foul, his first. And Brown will be at the line. Another one of their outstanding foul shooters, 87.5% at the foul line for Freddie Brown. When it comes to filling the hole, I'll tell you, it doesn't make any difference from what distance Freddie's at. Right. <laughs> 15 or 55, you leave him alone, and he's 
going to do a little damage. Latest college ball of Iowa. On the season, averaging uh, just under nine points a game. I was in Iowa Wednesday. I'll tell you, they're uh, grousing a little bit over the uh, misfortune of their state team, Iowa, there, who they oh, expected yes. to do real well. A little unhappiness at the moment. And that's carrying the Big Ten up. Maxwell trying to post up on King and does. Max has had an outstanding first quarter. 12 points. 12 points. That's uh, leading the Celtics here in the first quarter. I'll tell you, that comes uh, on the heels of a gangbuster performance in uh, Golden State last night. He had uh, 13. Basket is good by Sigma. It counts. And a foul is called in Paris. Maxwell had 13 of his uh, 24 points in the first quarter last night. Yeah, there's pretty good move. A little stutter move there by Sixner. Could have been a walk, I was but uh, say that. Jake O'Donnell right on top of it. Uh, up, uh, Robert Parrish picks up his second. Sixner's tough. As we said a while ago, he makes that quick turn. He gets it low, makes the quick turn, gets it over his head, which immediately, you know, if you're not alert, he gets the quick little jumper on you, so you've got to be right there with him, and he's got the ability, as he just showed you, to put it to the floor effectively as well. Johnson from the corner missed the shot, and, the quarter, and that is the end of the first quarter. The Celtics with a two-point lead. Their biggest lead of the first quarter was five, and we've come to the end, and it is Boston 32 and the Seattle Supersonics 30. Uh, at center because Bird has come back into the ball game. Sigma giving McHale a lot of problems. Bird. We got the Johnson, Ames, Bird, McHale, and Maxwell from the baseline. Danny Ames. Good ball movement on the part of the Celts there. Danny winds up with the ball on that weak side, knocks it home. Danny played extremely well, by the way, uh, last night also, as well as Max, that we mentioned at Golden State after coming off a couple of mediocre performances. Reggie King rolls it around and out, and Larry Bird wins the battle with Sigma. Bird looping ahead to Maxwell. Now Ames. Again, they go to Max Lowe. Oh, a couple of moves by Cedric. Missed the shot, however. Seattle did not make any changes to start the second quarter. I'll tell you what, dude, they're going to get worn down a little bit here. Here's Williams from outside. Oh, it brains out. Uh, yeah, Danny Brain's really, not going to play tonight. You know, Lenny Wilkins doesn't have too much of a choice. I think he's got to stay with his muscle as long as he can. And a foul is called on Reggie King of Seattle. Yeah, it is. He stays home pretty good. Then on the third fake, he goes up. Looks pretty good. Uh, pretty good block on the uh, replay. But Jake O'Donnell again a lot closer to it. Than, uh, small vantage point. Steve Hawes has come in for Seattle, and he replaces Reggie King. Steve Hawes for the Sonics, replacing Reggie King. Dennis Johnson at the foul line for Boston. He's got a pair of shots coming here. 34 to 30, the Celtics leading. Hawes came over from Atlanta last year. Pretty good backup center. He's capable, actually, of playing either the center or the power forward position, as is Jack Sigma, so they're interchangeable. Hawes can also go outside and hurt you. He won't put the ball on the floor as well as uh, Sigma, but he passes a little better than Jack, I think, so you've got to give him your attention. Celtics now with their biggest lead at 36 to 30, and that's quickly cut down to 30 six to 32. All right, they try to go low to McHale. The ball flips away, and Bird picks it up. Now McHale low, couple of fakes. Yes, the turnaround by Kevin. He's hitting a sensational 57% from the floor this season. Kevin having his best year. Seventh in the league in free throw uh, percentage. All right, Bird, the rebound again. The Celtics break out in a hurry. They are four on three right now. McHale is left open, running hook. No. And Bird gets the loose ball. Nice speed to McHale, no. Rebound by Hart. Celtics leading 38-32. Now Hawes, as Steve told you, has a nice touch from outside. Hawes is 6'9", a 6'10", so you're a little reluctant to go, you know, yeah. past that 15-foot range after him, but you don't. You'll make your play in the 
his first. Pause picks up the personal foul. That is the second team foul on Seattle here in the second quarter. 9.43 left in the quarter. Celtics leading six, uh, four points, 38-34. Bird goes right by Chambers, but cannot get the reverse layup. The ball into the hands of Sigma. Okay, he got clobbered, too. He looks up at Jake O'Donnell and says, come on, Jay, baby. you got to be kidding me. And, uh, Nice shovel pass to Max cutting down the middle. Good job by Larry Bird. I'll tell you, that's the third uh, layup that Larry has created for Max. I'm sure Max appreciates it. Nice shuffle job there. And the Sonics have called a timeout with 9.16 to go in the first half. Bird's going to get the pass from Mikhail, then quickly kick it off to Maxwell. Watch this. Nice little shovel pass to Max cutting in. That's the sixth assist of the game for Larry Bird last night in Oakland. He had 17 assists, the second highest ever in NBA history for a forward. The high is 19 by Rick Barry eight years ago. All right, Celtics are leading 40 to 34. Reggie King back in for Seattle on the turnaround jump shot miss on Hayes the rebound. King has come in replacing Sigma. They go ahead to McHale, but Ainge looped a little bit too far ahead. The Celtics had two people up the floor. Yeah, that's a bad play there because uh, he had plenty of floor, plenty of time to uh, make certain of his pass. That's giving two points away. Maxwell has gone out, and Parrish is back in. So it's Ainge, Johnson, Parrish, McHale, and Bird for the Celtics. And for Seattle, David Thompson has come in. And he has replaced uh, Gus Williams. There's Freddie Brown on the fall away. He's still a great shooter. He's been around a while, 36 years old. They like to bring Freddie off those weak side picks. And if you're not right there with him, if you're fluffing off it all right, that's all of what he needs. Uh, so got to play Freddie with or without the ball. McHale burying two more, and the Celtics are back up six points. There's Brown. Seattle's club on the floor right now. Freddie Brown, David Thompson with Hayes in the middle. Chambers and King are the forwards. Here's Reggie King. Former Alabama star. Pops in a couple. 42-38 Boston. Eight minutes to go first half. Oh, we're talking about Freddie Brown, I'll tell you. Uh, don't get lax on David Thompson either because... Uh, Two more for Larry. He can fill that hole in a hurry. Thompson has only played seven games this season. This is his eighth game of the season. He was a holdout for a long time. And then he, he just got back and pulled a uh, leg muscle, so he's just getting back off of that. Brown again. Woof. My goodness. Is he tough? Downtown is hitting him tonight. 44 to 40, the Celtics. Bird trying to go low to Parrish. Instead, takes the little runner. Tipped up, no. McHale, the follow, no. Parrish again. It's being pushed and shoved. They're not calling anything that time. Gee whiz. I mean, Parrish was getting annihilated. Chambers is trying to go out Larry Bird, and I use that advisedly because uh, <laughs> Bird is just toying with him. And now with Sigma out, uh, they're starting to uh, play ping pong on that offensive board. We told you to start Celts figure to have quite an advantage there. Jack Sigma had done an outstanding job uh, in the first quarter in, in pretty much controlling his own defensive board. Didn't give them too many second opportunities. But with him out of there and with McHale and Parrish, you can look for the Celtics to start rattling that board a little bit on the offense. Gerald Henderson coming in for the Celtics, and he replaces Dennis Johnson, who has played a very sharp first half all around. And Gerald into the ball game. One more free throw for the Chief. Averaging 20 points and 11 rebounds a game. Five to the team lead and blocked shots with 82, but he misses both free throws. So Seattle has a chance to get within a couple of points here with just over seven minutes to play in the first half. Well, but with only two points so far, that's an outstanding performance also in Oakland last night. 28 points and about 14 downs. Thompson, the missed shot, and another rebound for Parrish. He's only got a couple of points in that, but he's really been doing a job on the board. Henderson now aims. And we have Boston Foul and Kevin McHale. Kevin's first. A little contact and a little acting job on the part of uh, Reggie Smith. Reggie King, excuse me, got the job done and a foul call by Tommy Noonan. Uh, here's Hawes. Hawes playing very tight defense so far in this first half. Brown. And we're going to get 
the foul and aim. You know, the last time down when Freddie uh, put the, uh, the last line drive job in there, his third basket, he turned to Jake and said, Jake, he's punching me in the chest. And it paid off because that's exactly what Jake called that time on Danny. That time he missed it, but he got his free throw. Ainge comes out, and Quinn Buckner was checked in for the Celtics. They'll make it a backcourt now of Henderson and Buckner, and a frontcourt of Parrish, Bird, and McHale. And Freddie Brown to shoot a couple for Seattle. The Celtics leading 44 to 40, 635. Left in the first half, a crowd of 20,000 on hand here at the Kingdom. Where the weather's been very nice for the last couple of days. Yes, it has. I saw the Sunshine, top of the building. Two days in a row. Uh, two days in a row. That's unusual out here at this time of the year. It's been known to drizzle and fog up. Beautiful sight coming over the uh, Cascade yesterday. Mount Hood and Lanier and Baker. And even saw a little smoke coming out of St. Helens. Buckner on the baseline. No. Coming out of the pack is David Thompson. He looks heavy, too. Missed the shot. Bird, good job off the defensive boards. Didn't Thompson look as though he put on a few pounds? Uh, I'll tell you the truth, I haven't seen him play in about three years. So it's uh, certainly from, you know, from that time, he looks a little heavier. McHale sliding right by King. Ooh. You know, we talk a lot that about an exhaust. most teams not having a man to match up with Kevin McHale. Uh, and that's so, I think, in most cases. When he came in early, Sigma was guarding him, and Sigma's a perfect matchup. Kevin didn't really do that much. Uh, but now he's got Reggie King, and he's just toying with Reggie and Celtics are trying kind of to exploit the mismatch. Celtics back, Bird, nice. Nice pass, nice job by Bird, sliding right by Brown, who had him trapped to the inside. Larry went around the other way. Freddie Brown was back, but he went for the steal. And once he missed, there was no one between he and the basket. Bird just ran it in there. All right, King, and now Chambers. Sigma getting set to come back in for Seattle. The rebound to Quinn Buckner. Celtics are up six points right now, equaling their biggest lead. Anderson. Well, starting to control the game here in the second quarter. Reggie King, the rebound. Chambers back for the Sonics. They've got Gus Williams and Sigma out simultaneously, and I'll tell you, those are the two guys that make this club go. So with both of them on the bench at once, uh, they'll have an opportunity here to increase their lead. Pause, and now David Thompson, and an offensive foul is called on Seattle. The foul is called on Steve Hawes. Now Chambers goes out, and there's Sigma back in. Here it is. Thompson trying to free himself. He's and evidently uh, the foul. Trying to give him a little help. Bird popping off. And he hits it as he came right off of that pick. And just floated it in like a snowflake. Celtics equal their biggest lead, eight points. And there's a timeout taken with four minutes and 24 seconds left to play here in the first half. The Celtics lead right now their biggest of the ball game at uh, 50 to 42. And Kuz, you were talking about the Celtics starting to take a little control here at this point in the game. They, for the most part, have not given Seattle more than one shot. And the Celtics have been getting two or three at times on their own end. Well, other than the uh, weakness in the front court that we talked about uh, in the uh, persons of, you know, Brains, Reggie King, and Chambers, the, the uh, department itself really have a big advantage over them in is, uh, is the rebounding. So, you know, it's not enough, as we've seen in the past, to simply have an advantage in a particular area. You've got to exploit them. In other words, if it's rebounding, you've got to go out there and bang butts and hit the boards and so forth. And uh, while Sigma was in there in that first quarter, they are rebounded themselves in the first quarter, I believe, thanks to Sigma. Once they put him on the bench to get his rest, why the Celtics went to work and took advantage. I want to remind you, there'll be a special edition of Eyewitness News with Liz Walker tonight at halftime here in TV4. Sick with a missed shot and a rebound right into the waiting arms of Cedric Maxwell. Seattle's grown a little cold from the floor here in the second quarter. I Buckner, now Maxwell. Celtics leading by eight points. 3.55 to go in the half. 
Well, other than Reggie King, they don't have a bird is destroying oh. uh, Chambers and now Moore. Neither one of them are physically well matched in terms of their skills to, to give Larry much of a go. Yeah, Reggie King is the only one that can do any damage inside at the moment. Sick McCasey, but as you can see, he prefers to <laughs> take it to the basket, but he walked that time. Yep. Uh, so he prefers the outside shot, and horse isn't going to hurt you inside either, so I think that's affecting the offense negatively. Dennis Johnson back in for the Celtics, replacing Quinn Buckner. And there you see Lenny Wilkins with his uh, third-year guard, Al Woods, getting set to bring him back into the ball game. Celtics right now have a 10-point lead. That's their fattest of the ball game. Bird, no. Rebound to Sigma. Taking it all the way down was Thompson and losing the ball. Well, the Celtics will get the ball back on the turnover. Now Al Wood is in for Seattle. And Reggie King goes out. That'll put Wood at a forward position. And that gives them a front court that uh, remains small. Wood is only 6'6". Henderson is called for palming the ball. Gus Williams in for Seattle now, replacing Freddie Brown. It seems to be a little careless in those strangest times uh, with, with the basketball. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, they've made up for it with, we said, good rebounding here in this quarter. Also excellent defense. Yeah. Last night they went, oh, Lucy Goosey. Sigma finally hits one of those ball away jobs. They went Lucy Goosey in the first half and really didn't dig in until the second half defensively. Tonight it's uh, pretty much been the reverse. Nice pass by Henderson off to Robert Parrish. Williams uh, came in and they did not take Brown out. Instead, they took out David Thompson. That'll be Williams and Brown at the guard. Sigma at center with Wood and Hawes at the forwards. Hawes at 6'6 is a swing man. Thompson still looks like he's hurting a bit. Good pass by Freddie Brown. Yep. Boston. Celtics take a timeout with 2.26 to go here in the first half. The Celtics leading it by eight points right now, and the Celtics have taken the timeout. Here's another look at that shot by Freddie Brown, a pass by Brown, rather, to Sigma. Dennis is right there, as you saw, but he was able to still release and find Sigma underneath. 2.26 to go in the first half. Celtics leading by eight points, 54-46, and it remains an eight-point lead. McHale has come in to replace Parrish, who has three personal fouls. I want to remind you, at halftime, a special edition of Eyewitness News coming up in a couple of minutes with Liz Walker here on TV4. All right, 2.15 left, first half. Johnson posting up Freddie Brown on the baseline turnaround, and Dennis buried the line drive. The ball is stolen by Henderson. Gets it off to Johnson. Good, quick hands and anticipation by Dennis Henderson, uh, but Gerald Henderson. Two minutes left in the half. Bird looping it to Max for two. Boy, what a great pass that was. Whew. I'll tell you what, South really starting to take control here. 12-point lead now, Boston's biggest of the ball game. They're really turning up the excellent offense. You know, they're not forcing anything. They're moving the ball. They're moving well without it. They're going inside very effectively. This is something that usually Seattle defense is pretty well against this team. Brown hits another two for the Sonics. A minute and 25 seconds left to play here in the first half. Still looking inside. Max has been working very effectively on Hawes. Bird, no. Maxwell, great job off the offensive board. They knock him to the floor, and we're going to have a jump ball call. Now, Tom Chambers is coming in for Seattle. Max is going to have to jump against the floor because that was the only other, <laughs> only other uh, inanimate object that had any part of the ball, I'll tell you. They were surrounding him, but no one... Uh, made an attempt to put a hand on the ball from what we could see. Now, they won't let Chambers into the ball game, so he's going to have to wait. Who's he going to jump? Let's uh, pause. Pause. Well pause. 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 It goes over to Seattle's Al Wood. One minute to play, first half. Celtics leading by 10. They've pretty much been in front throughout in this basketball game. Brown and now Hawes again. looking well, west and he was shooting east. He won the <laughs> through a foul, obviously. Sure he, he knew where he was on the floor, though. It wasn't, uh, you know, that weird a shot, really. Especially with the way that guy shoots. Uh, Two from Fred Brown. Uh, goose. <laughs> well, 
if he had put that one in, it would have been an, an absolute miracle shot. All right, the free throw by Brown is good. I want to remind you, this telecast presented by authority of the Boston Celtics and WBZ TV Sports, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Boston Celtics Basketball Club and WBZ TV is prohibited. Sonics have run in four unanswered points to cut the Celtics' lead down to eight points with 50 seconds to go in the first half. Daryl Henderson has got Gus Williams on him. Kale tried to come through the middle, and a foul will be called, I believe, on Sigma, way up high. It is on Sigma. That is the fourth team foul on Seattle in the first in the last two minutes of play, and now the second in the last two minutes of play, and it's on Jack Sigma. Sigma has picked up two fouls in a matter of a couple of seconds here. He did not have any prior to that, and so we'll have a Celtics ball player at the line to take a couple of shots. It's going to be Kevin McHale, and they quickly get Sigma out and replace him with Steve Hawes. Obviously, not the kind of fouls you like to see your big man pick up. This is uh, close to halftime. Lenny Wilkins immediately gets him out of there because those things run in yeah, cycles. cycles, you know. Committed two in about five seconds. I know. Pretty close to my uh, usual records. One more for Kevin McHale. Well, I tell you, he's doing everything so well this season. His foul shooting is up around 78%. Averaging 18 and a half points, seven and a half rebounds, tied with Robert Parrish for the lead and blocked shots on the ball club. Ten point lead for the Celtics now, with 25 seconds to go in the half. Traveling, yes. Al Wood took a couple of giant steps before he put the ball to the floor, and the Celtics get it on the turnover with 23 seconds to go in the first half, and they can wind it all the way down if they want. Play for the final shot. Self-defense continues to create a lot of opportunities uh, for themselves and a lot of turnovers and for Seattle. The, the fifth traveling call in Seattle in this half. But uh, not just KLS as they say they're being created by the aggressive South Street. Larry, no. McHale, a rebound again. It is good by no. In and out. Son of a gun. Oh. Thought that thing did everything but drop through the bottom of the net. Excellent work by McHale. Didn't get the hoop on it, but the Celtics a very solid first half and a 10-point lead. It is 60 to 50 right now. There's your score. The Celtics are up by 10. Stay tuned for a special edition now of Eyewitness News with Liz Walker at halftime. And coming up next on TV4 after these messages. Bill Santos with Bob Cousy at halftime here at the Kingdom in Seattle with our score the Celtics leading it 60 to 50 at halftime. Their biggest lead of the first half was 12 points. The Celtics pretty much control the first half. Tonight's game brought to you by Mass Chevy Dealers. We're not number one for nothing. By the Boston Globe. Remember, no paper brings the world of sports closer to home than the Boston Globe. The Globe's here. And by Getty Unleaded Plus. At Getty, the proof is at the pump. We have a whole raft of greetings and salutations to the folks back home, way back home, as we are about as far away from Boston and New England as you can get by staying in the continental United States. And uh, so a lot of people who are now out here in the Pacific Northwest have greetings. Hi to Jesse McFarland and Kevin Haggerty in Brookline from Scott and Jim. Robin and Hank, hi to the uh, Insick family. You take a look at the halftime statistics showing the Celtics with 54% shooting and the Sonics with only 39. The Celtics have forced most of those 13 turnovers, too, including five traveling calls. They have the rebounding even, and that's got to be a home court advantage thing, Coos, because the Celtics are just doing a job on the boards. Especially in the second quarter. I thought that's really how they built up their 10-point uh, lead. More greetings for uh, the folks back home. The dad watching in Boston from Karen and Al. The dad in Lexington. Uh, also, uh, Joe and... Uh, Brian, I believe, regards to all of their friends in Boston. Barry Brown, out here in business, uh, saying hi to his wife. Best wishes to his father for a complete speedy recovery at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Hi to the folks in Northridge from Don Miller. Hi to Randy DeMarsh and Karen McCarthy at Plymouth State College from Randy. Everyone in Nashua from Fuzzy. Uh, out here in Seattle, uh, rooting for the Celtics, Stuart Weiner, formerly of Quinzen, Quincy. Uh, also, hi to... Uh, you can figure this one out. Okay, all the family and friends in Quincy from Bob Petiti. Uh, Bernie Piccanisso. Hello to Bernie, his mom and dad. Uh, Car from Lisa. And also 
also uh, an old friend of mine here in Seattle from New Bedford, John Prisendell, says hi to all of his friends back home, as well as Ray Ballatin and Ashburn have. And that takes care of our greetings and salutations. Who's your thoughts on the first half, the way the Celtics played, and what are you looking for in the second half? I think they played excellent defense, as we pointed out a few times, Bill. Uh, they did a reasonable job on Gus Williams, who's uh, second leading score with 18. They held him to seven. Sigma, they held to nine. He's averaging 20, but the point is they didn't let either one of these very explosive scores get started. Uh, the only one really was Fred Brown, uh, who came in, you know, with 14. But he had to do it from outside. That's the, not the way the Celtics are, are going to lose it. The, the board uh, advantage, they say it reads even. Uh, uh, I think from our vantage point, the Celtics had an advantage. They at least capitalized when they had to. With Sigma on the bench, they exploded off that offensive board and built themselves up a lead. Offensively, I'll tell you, they ran very smoothly. Triggered by Bird's outside shooting and Max's work inside, but they really, <laughs> with that yeah. said, right. I was going to say they did it so effectively and they throw the ball away. Max was looking so. for Parrish low, just flat out threw the ball away. All around a good half of basketball for the Celtics. All right, Reggie King, and he travels with it. That is the sixth traveling call called on the Sonics tonight. Celtics are starting the second half with Johnson and Henderson at the guards, Parrish in the middle, Bird, and Maxwell up front. Seattle starting Williams, Woods, Sigma, Chambers, and King. All right, DJ's got Chambers on him in a mismatch. Now DJ's left alone, does not hit the hoop. Maxwell, the offensive rebound, but a foul will be called on Cedric Maxwell. Loose ball foul. Uh, DJ, by the way, had 10 points for the Celtics. I'm sure he would like to have a good offensive idea, if only because, you know, the talk when he left here in terms of the problems he was having with Lenny Wilkins was that he was shooting too much. Lenny thought he, he had become too offensive-minded. Sigma hits from outside. Uh, so I'm sure he'd like to have a good night offensively. Bird answers immediately. As I say, Chambers might as well not be out there. He's picking Larry up late and, uh, you know, He's pretty much giving him the outside shot. Larry is obliged very effectively. And when he does occasionally go out to guard him, Bird puts it to the floor and uh, goes by. Chambers comes back to get to. Bird now has 20 points. At halftime, he had 20.7 rebounds and eight assists. Or 18 points. Now he's at 20. Robert misses the turnaround. The deep rebound to Gus Williams. Celtics leading by eight points. Just into the third quarter of play. Chambers, who played his college ball at Utah, good hands shown there on defense by Bird. He deflected the ball away. Larry back, beautiful feed to Henderson. Great play. Nice job. Gerald looking for a foul as well uh, and didn't get it. But that was a great pass by Bird and a super job by Henderson to squeeze that one up. Nine assists now for Larry Bird after 17 assists tonight, as we've told you uh, last night. King. Not normally going to hurt you from out there. Usually let him take that shot. Henderson back for the south. Now Parrish. Robert did not have a big offensive first half. Now he sweeps in, but he's called for traveling. Good defensive effort on Sigma there. Robert wanted to go outside. Sigma was there by the time he got himself untangled and spun back in. Why, evidently, he moved the pivot foot. Robert had only two points in the first half. Al Wood straight away. Sonics have chopped the Celtics lead down to six points, and now the Celtics want a timeout as KC Jones wants to get the troops uh, reassembled here. Nine and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. The Celtics lead is down to six. They up in the huddle. They sent Henderson across the lane to pick for Robert, who came quickly from the weak side. Good pass by Bird, and he spun back in there. Air ball by Chambers, and it's going to be out of bounds off of Seattle as Wood made a nice play to try to keep the ball in play, but then he whacked it off the backboard on the other side. Well, the Celtics get the ball in the turnover. Just under nine minutes to play. Third quarter. Bird now has King on. Oh, look at this. Beautiful fastball by Bird right down the chute to Maxwell. That is the 10th assist for Larry Bird. He had se uh, 17 last night in Golden State. Such an advantage to see the floor as effectively as Larry does. Of course, I think his passing ability and his size and really makes the game a heck of a lot easier to play for Larry than most guys. Now, he must have incredible peripheral vision. Well, 
plus body positioning has a lot to do with it too and he, you know he does this he's never blind to uh, any part of the floor just by virtue of how he uh, positions himself nice job by johnson to keep the ball alive and that got the celtics two points dennis johnson just jumped into the pack and tapped that ball back outside and it went to paris that was a fine job of keeping the ball alive and getting two out of it celtics back up by 10. Weak side rebound to Johnson. He's having a very, very strong all-around game, Cruz. Okay, I haven't seen Chambers before, but I'm, uh, I'm not impressed so far by what I've seen. His defense, as we pointed out, is extremely weak, and he's really starting to force his offense. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> My goodness. I don't know if he's guarded Bird before, but I'll tell you, if he hasn't, he's going to remember this night for a while. Bird's got, what, 22 now. 24 now for Larry Bird. 7.20 to go in the third quarter. The Celtics equaling their biggest lead, 12 points. Wood comes through, no. Chambers the rebound, no. And a whistle and foul inside. That'll be the fourth on Robert Parrish. Good flurry on that offensive board that time by Sigma Lilly, who kept it alive. But Chambers uh, had his nose in there as well and picked off the uh, Chambers, uh, excuse me, the Sigma deflection put it back up that is four on Robert Parrish and two on the Celtics as a team here in the third quarter Chambers making it 72-61 uh, Kevin McHale getting set to come in for the Celtics and he'll have to replace Robert now, hold it. now they have given the foul to Larry Bird and taken it away from Robert Parrish now, that'll be Bird's second personal foul. So keep Parrish with three. And also keep him in the game. Yeah, because he was Case, going to come uh, out. Yeah, Case had McHale at the table, and he drew him back. Uh, one more free throw for Tom Chambers, 81.5% foul shooter. There's Chambers from Utah. Knocking it home. So it is a 10-point Boston lead right now. 7-10 to play in the third quarter at the Kingdom. 20,000 folks are here watching. They've taken Chambers off Bird and put King on him. Parrish again wheeling inside. No, the rebound to King. Wise move, I would say. Not only based on what's happened so far in the game, but uh, King with good speed and quickness, I think, is better equipped to uh, give Larry more of a go. They quickly break it out to Henderson, but it's stolen by Gus Williams. The Sonics now look to get the thing back down to six points. Good transition by Gus. We told you they were releasing the top man occasionally because they're pretty sure controlling that defensive board. They got themselves a hoop in the first uh, quarter. Chambers, that time a fine move by the uh, big man taking it into the basket. Well, the Celtics lead is down to six points at 72 to 66. In the past, Gil, Seattle has done a good job in the transition game. They've been able to get back there to run away on that fast break. Good defense again by Williams forces another turnover on the part of Gerald Henderson. And the other thing they've done well in the past is somewhat neutralize the inside game. Now in that first half, Celts were extremely effective on both the break, and as we said, they went inside well, so they're going to have to pick up the uh, defense a bit. Williams along the baseline throws up a running hook. But Parrish clears it away. Not a good shot by Williams. Henderson pushing it up quickly for the Celtics. Johnson now. Boston leading by six. Find Parrish alone at the foul line, and he's called for walking. Well, that's what a couple of turnovers will do. You know, they can turn that momentum around. If nothing else, they get the crowd's attention when you're away from home. You know, this sometimes can have an effect on the... Uh, the uh, emotional approach by the players which which will change the momentum Harris goes out and McHale comes in for the Celtics now Chambers with it for Seattle this is Al Woods a double pump runner and a foul will be called on Dennis Johnson Number three, Dennis Johnson with his third personal. that's the third personal foul on Johnson the third on the Celtics as a team here in the third quarter Seattle doesn't have any which 
given the fact that they have increased their defensive tempo just a bit and are gambling more now without any team fouls at the moment will give them a little more flexibility in this regard. They can get a bit more aggressive and maybe even gamble a little bit more in order to continue this string of turnovers that they seem to have forced on the Celtics. One more free throw for Al Wood who missed the first one. And he gets the second. Celtics have turned the ball over five times so far in this quarter. Bird to go with his 10 assists has 24 points and seven rebounds. 515 left third quarter. Anderson going on Gus Williams. 10 seconds on the shot clock, and we're going to get a foul called. And this one, I believe, is going to be called in Seattle at will. The deck will have a jump ball. Good quick double up inside on the part of Gus Williams. That's the third turnover that he has created now in the last couple of minutes here. Oh, Gus, uh, we think of him primarily on the offensive end of the court, but I'll tell you, he has such great quickness that uh, he can burn you on the other end as well. I'll have a re jump. Neither man touched the ball the way up. Kale and Cha uh, Maxwell and Chambers jumping, and Max controlling to Gerald Henderson. Dennis Johnson baseline. DJ oh. makes it 74-67. Celtics lead now, seven points again. 4:45 left, third quarter. There's Gus Williams. Now Chambers goes to the baseline, gets it back out to Reggie King Bird. Great position to get the rebound off to Henderson. Gerald snaking through traffic. Bird tried to blind pass to McHale. Sigma stolen. And they throw it away at the other end. Seattle not normally a fast-breaking team. Now Bird line drive past to Maxwell. And Sandrick stepped out of bounds, says Tommy Nunez. Max ran out of bounds, but he claimed he had a little help from his friend on his back. Yeah, that's not the way Tommy Nunez saw it. Sigma came out of the pack that time. And again, you know... As versatile as Sigma is, if the, if the big man comes out of the pack that way, give it to the guard. Let him make the play. You know, it's so much safer, and uh, so often it'll create a good shot rather than the turnover. Sigma from outside. 74-69. The Celtics lead is down to five points with four minutes to go in the third quarter. However, if you don't want to do that, if you're a big man, you can go out there 17 feet and knock one home. He does do that quite well. Henderson from just outside the foul circle. Max does a terrific job to keep the ball alive and keep it. So the Celtics have a fresh 24 seconds to work with here. Three minutes, 40 seconds left, third quarter. Celtics have led since the early going. Johnson got his man in the air, and that's Al Wood, and Al Wood commits the foul, and Dennis Johnson will be at the line to take a couple of shots for the Celtics. Boston led at the quarter to start the ball game by a score of 32 to 30 then they outscored seattle 28 20 in that second quarter for a 10-point halftime lead that now has been cut to five gerald henderson goes out and danny ainge comes in for the celtics as you look at dennis johnson who has 12 points three block shots to go with those 12 now he has 13 points and that's his average on the season 13 points for the celtics Dennis has played well. We started to say that he averaged 19 points a game last year. He was here, and Lenny supposedly got into it with him about he was shooting too much. And I, I, you know, just having seen Dennis play now extensively this year and seeing his skills and his strengths and all, it seems to me he's in a bit of better scoring range in terms of his talent with the Celtics, averaging 13, 14, maybe 12 a game, and keying on his defensive skills yeah. and his passing skills. Cuts it back down to five points again at 76-71. Ainge and Johnson now are the Celtics guards with McHale playing the middle, and he goes up over Sigma. This is the shot. Sigma the rebound off to Chambers. Chambers is one on three. Missed the shot. Not a good choice by Chambers as he had three Celtics back. Johnson hitting McHale, cutting through the middle, but Dennis lost the ball. 
and it's out of bounds off the Celtics. Chambers hitting the deck at the other end. And there's a timeout called by Seattle with a score 76-71. Our next Celtics telecast here on TV4 will be Sunday night at 10 o'clock as we follow the Celtics down to Portland, Oregon for a game against the Trailblazers. Celtics and Trailblazers Sunday night at 10, right here on TV4. All right, Seattle, Williams, Wood, Sigma, Chambers, and King. No changes for Seattle so far in the third quarter. Reggie King blocked by McHale and a foul. Stop pass to the Celtics. Stop pass to the Celtics. called on Cedric Maxwell. I'm surprised a little bit that they haven't gone inside to Reggie King more often. Two times I've seen King play. I'll tell you, he has uh, an amazing array of moves in there, and they're quick ones, if you notice, you know. They're the type that will draw contact and a foul. there, number eight, is in for the Celtics to replace Maxwell. One more free throw for King. He rims the hoop on that one, and McHale with a rebound. Celtics' lead is down to its smallest since the second quarter. A four-point lead. They led by ten at the half. Their biggest lead has been 12. McWedman from the corner buries it. Well, Scott comes in and hits his first shot, taken to the ball game, and the Celtics are quickly back up by six again with two minutes to go here in the third quarter. They see loading the lineup with some offensive power here in the last couple of minutes in the third two quarter. Wedman, Ainge, third. DJ is shooting well tonight. Chambers getting position and sneaking the rebound away. Now Wood for Seattle. Sonics looking for the open man. Instead, Gus Williams gets himself open and buries it. 78-74, Celtics. Pretty good quarter for the Sonics here. The first good one, really. Yeah, the first two quarters, the Celtics had them talking to themselves, especially defensively. The Celtics were really doing a job on them. Well, it picks up their defensive effort. It affected, I think, their uh, offensive output as well. It's so often that will do. Chambers back for Seattle. They can get within two points here with a minute and 15 to go in the third quarter. Williams comes around the Sigma pick. Ainge stays with him. Now Sigma from outside. No, and the rebound is out of bounds. Off. Ainge, says Jake O'Donnell. That'll be Sonic's ball with Al Wood to put it in play. Sonic's continue to look to get back in from outside, however. And, you know, they're doing a good job momentarily, but I'll tell you what. Williams. The tip-in attempt is missed by Sigma, and the third time goes in. Yeah, three shots at it. That's why he's an all-star forward, uh, center of it. Sigma keeping it alive on that offensive board. McHale trying to go for the tip-in. We have a foul called on Tom Chambers, and that'll be his third personal foul, and it will put Scott Wedman at the free throw line for the Celtics. Look, Wedman here trying to tip it in, gets ridden out of bounds by wow. Chambers. Good grief. Well, I'd say there was a little contact on that play, wouldn't you? A trifle. Chambers is 6'11", uh, 226-pounder. Robert Parrish back in for the Celtics. He replaces Larry Bird. So McHale will move over to forward, and Parrish back into the middle. Larry goes out with 24 points. Good night's nice work so far, although uh, don't go away. I think we'll be seeing him again before too long. Wedman gets both of his free throws, so with 41 seconds to go in the third quarter, the Celtics are back up by four points. Williams, now Chambers on the turnaround. Rebound to McHale on the weak side. The Celtics quickly push it up. Ainge on the stop and pop. Yes, basket counts, and a foul is called. It's an offensive foul called on the Celtics after the shot by Ainge. I'll tell you what, Chambers was upset on the shot he took with Wedman guarding him, and as he objected on the offensive end to Jake O'Donnell, he also turned with his left hand and grabbed Wedman and would not let him run down court. And it took Scott... 90 feet to catch up to him, and he finally retaliated, and that's the foul. Oh, that AC is really hot, and he was just hit with a technical foul by Nunez. And now Jake O'Donnell is trying to uh, calm KC 
Casey down. And what Casey is telling them is that Chambers did exactly. just that to Wedman uh, earlier. Exactly. They, uh, so often that'll happen. You know, they miss the first one, and then uh, they catch the retaliatory foul. And well, what it all boils down to is with 26 seconds to go in the half, it is now 80 uh, in the third quarter. It is now 82 to 77, and now Wedman and Chambers are talking to each other as the technical foul shot was just hit by the Sonics, and Chambers will go to the line. There's CKC, who really got hot under the collar at that on the old uh, set of business. Well, a series of events went that Chambers leaned in, could have called a, a uh, lean-in foul, a charge, when he took the shot, but he felt he was hammered by Wedden, so he complained about that, as I say, thinking that he was fouled. Uh, and in so doing, he also grabbed Wedman, literally just held on to his shirt, wouldn't let him run. And that, I tell you, it's those kind of little chicken fouls that get you more I'm aggravated still. getting wiped out, you know? Yeah. You can live with the wiped out because you know you're going to go to the line, but the little chicken job, grab the pants, grab the shirt, uh, you got some reason gets your attention a lot quicker. All right, it's 82-79 with 15 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Ainge controlling the ball on Gus Williams. The Celtics play it down for the final shot of the third quarter. Williams trying to go for the steal. Ainge getting it off to Johnson. Dennis's jump shot, no good. Rebound King. That will be the end of the third quarter with the Celtics leading by three points. A strong third quarter for the Seattle Supersonics. And so after three at the Kingdom, it is the Celtics 82 and Seattle 79. question of momentum swing you know uh, Seattle was kind of quiet the first half they did get the momentum uh, and they created the momentum change literally with their defensive play Sigma did a fine job off the board got the fans into it so at the moment they've got the momentum if they can hold on to it and Gus Williams is hope isn't going to hurt you know they could run it out and the sellers could have some trouble but uh, I think uh, again defense and the board is going to make a difference you know in the Quarter. The Celtics should have an advantage in both areas. And they throw the ball away. Williams picks it up, and it's out of bounds off Gus Williams. The Sonics have cut the Celtics' lead to one point, 82-81. It'll be Boston ball. The Celtics have Wedman, Ainge, Johnson, McHale, and Parrish on the floor. And Seattle has Williams, Wood, King, Chambers, and Paws on the floor as uh, Jack Sigma has gone out. Jake O'Donnell talking to the timekeeper to uh, bring the 24-second clock down to seven seconds because Seattle never did have control of the ball. The Celtics never did take a shot. All right, Wedman with it, goes around King, and King commits the foul. First team foul on Seattle here in the fourth quarter. It'll be Celtics ball again, and they'll get a fresh 24 seconds. All right. Wedman with it, now Danny Ainge. They kick it low to McHale. Got Chambers on it. Again to McHale. Kevin into the lane. And a whistle and foul called on Seattle on Tom Chambers. And again with six on the bench. Helped immediately go to work on Chambers, uh, who is trying to guard McHale. He picks up his fourth. He's a very physical Kevin player. McHale. He does a lot of, a lot of he's got physical, exactly, in terms of being active, but not physical, you know, in terms of uh, weight or size, necessarily. Oh, he's he is 6'11", but down. exactly, yeah. One more free throw for Kevin. He's not a Jeff Rulon. The way, so yeah, right. One more, and McHale hits them both. After three quarters, Bird is having a pretty fair evening. 24 points, 9 rebounds, 11 assists. He's on the bench right now. 19,468 the attendance here in Seattle's Kingdom tonight. The biggest crowd of the year. Ainge on the steal. He's got a breakaway. Williams is with him. Ainge misses the shot, and he was fouled by Gus Williams. Nice defensive play by Danny Ainge. Good job by Danny in terms of anticipating the swing of the ball. Here it is. He knows that uh, Seattle wants to swing it over to that weak side where the uh, slump is, and he moved in, of course, Danny with amazing speed and quickness anyway, and takes it away from Gus Williams. Danny, an excellent foul shooter, 82% on the season standing in there, averaging just under six a game, and was not 
not get the second one. So the Celtics lead it by four, 85 to 81. Williams for the Sonics. Wood almost lost the ball off his foot. I'm surprised that Lenny has got Sigma out again here. You know, we talked about their momentum. They end up with an off-balance shot. The Celtics on the lead pass from McHale to Parrish and cannot control it. We talked about the momentum swing that they had taken advantage of in the third quarter. By putting Sigma on the bench, I'll tell you, you can almost assure uh, yourself that it, there will be a swing, you know, and that the Celtics will regain it because they just don't have the strength with him out of there. He's such a key to just about everything that they do. The Sonics have called for a timeout. With 10.23 to play in the basketball game, there's your score. The Celtics up four. That'll be the Sonics ball. Larry Bird is back in for the Celtics. And he replaces Cedric Maxwell. Freddie Brown is in for Seattle. He replaces Al Wood. Jack Sickman's back in replacing Chambers. So Seattle now has Brown, Williams, Hawes, Sickman, and King in the ball game. And Williams coming through the middle. A foul is called on Danny Ames. Good job by Gus. He came across his, uh, from the weak side, used that little stick effectively inside. And when the defense was set behind, coming across the pick, like, gave him an opening in the basket. Because he penetrates so well. Amazing speed and quickness. Gus Williams averaging 18 points a game for the Sonics, along with eight assists. And one of the top steal men in the league with 106 steals coming into the ball game. He misses that time. So it's a three-point Boston lead. Ainge, Johnson, Parrish, Bird, and McHale for the Celtics. Larry getting it to Johnson trying to post up. On Brown, comes back out to Bird. They swing it to the open man, Ainge. Very Ainge. Good job. Anytime that, you know, they, they double off of Danny Ainge and self-swing that ball to the weak side so effectively, find that uh, free guy. And he's able to... The same shot that we talked about the well, first quarter. Well, he looked away. <laughs> and let me right. tell you, that's his shot. <laughs> uh, oh, Freddie Brown gives us a bit of doodle, uh, look right and shoot left. Johnson and posting up Brown, knocks it home. Big hoop for Dennis Johnson. And the Celtics, it gives him a five-point lead again with 9.20 to go in the game. But I'd say anytime Danny Ainge squares himself, you know, and he's well balanced for the basket, I'll tell you, he's going to put that thing in. It's only when he forces that jumper under pressure that he has trouble with it. Sigma picks up the loose ball for the Sonics. Jack Sigma muscles it up, misses it. A rebound to Kevin McHale. Celtics in this fourth quarter so far have not allowed Seattle a second shot at the hoop. Bird. They're trying to exploit the mismatch underneath. They feel Dennis Johnson has a height advantage on... Great oh. job by McHale on the offensive boards. Get the Celtics a fresh 24. Shot is good by Bird. No basket. Foul is called on King prior to the shot. Fourth on the team. Fourth team foul on Seattle here early in the fourth quarter with eight and a half minutes to go. So Seattle's at the limit in team fouls in this quarter. Also, fourth foul on King. Catches Dennis going back door. As a result, the pass bounced off his chest. Celtics leading by five. That'll happen a lot when you're being overplayed. Pause inside, partially deflected by McHale, but a foul will be called on McHale. McHale with a foul, he has three. That is the third personal foul on McHale. Steve Hawes is shooting two. And Steve Hawes at the line to shoot a couple for Seattle. There it is. Hawes kind of pushes Kevin off with the inside. Um, with his ability or lack of it in terms of that mismatch, he shouldn't be bringing it to Kevin. He should be taking it away. He got away with it that time on a, a questionable call as far as Kevin was concerned, at least. One uh, more for Haas. Short that time. Sickner tried to tip it in. No. Rebound to Parrish. Don't tip it if you can grab the rebound, big guys out there. That's what Jack tried to do that time. He was too far away from the hoop. Get control of it. Bird. No. Rebound to Parrish. Harris. Got himself in great position for that offensive rebound. The Celtics are back up by six. 7.50 to go in the basketball game. Ainge has done a 
good defensive job on Williams here in the third quarter. They get Hawes in low. He knocks in the turnaround. Oh, it's a four-point game again. 91-87. Yeah, now that time he knew he had drawn third on the uh, on the switch. So he leaned into him. If he does that with McHale, as I say, he's got a different situation defensively. McHale probably will throw it back at him. McHale missing the shot, and the Sonics now with a chance to get within two points of the Celtics. Celtics have led since the early going. First couple of minutes of play. Williams goes baseline on Ainge. Blocked by Ainge. Picked up by Williams. Blocked that time by Bird. And Dennis Johnson comes away with it. Great defensive sequence by the Celtics. And Johnson buries it at the other end. Boy, oh boy. That was outstanding two-way basketball by the Celtics. Big hope by Dennis Johnson. Big hit by that fine defensive effort on Gus Williams by the Celtics. Both Ainge and Johnson collaborated on... Uh, Williams as he got down on the baseline. King firing one up and another foul on McHale. That'll be four on Kevin. Now with four personal. And Reggie King, if you look at him there, will step to the line and shoot for the Seattle Super Sonics. Started his career as the number one pick of the Kansas City Kings and was traded over here prior to the start of this season. Not a good free throw shooter. 65%. And the team is shooting at 78% almost. This is the time in the game when you want to go inside again to guys like King because this is when the defenses are starting to tire and a guy with his kind of moves is almost going to pick up a foul every time that you can go inside to him. Celtics take a 20-second timeout and as if the Portland Trailblazers aren't going to be up enough for the Celtics when they go in there Sunday night for our next telecast at 10 o'clock here in TV4. The Trailblazers tonight were beaten at home by the Washington Bullets, 96 to 87, so that's going to make them all the more ornery. And they're going to be smoking anyway because the Celtics are coming in, and now they lose at home, and they haven't lost at home very often this season. They don't fool with a wounded animal, no, right? Sir. No, sir. Uh, you're absolutely right. It's simply going to make the Celtic task that much tougher on Sunday. Yeah, a little NBA trivia history for you. On this date, 12 years ago, Randy Smith played 906 consecutive NBA games. All right, the score is 93-89 Celtics, six and a half minutes to go in the game. King has just hit a pair of free throws for Seattle. Ames looking for help now as the play broke down. Now they come back to Bird. King has done a good defensive job on Bird since taking him over. Parrish, baseline rainbow, rolls in. Chief starting to assert himself here in the fourth quarter as he's had a slow game offensively. Celtics back up six points. That won't happen so often, however, in the anxiousness to guard Larry, at least an opportunity for someone else. That time, Robert Parrish slid off that Bird pick, and uh, Bird, of course, hits those three men so well when he picks up double team that it usually results in a good shot if he gets the pass. Rebound by Bird. 5.47 to go in the game. Ainge knocks it home again. He's had two good games in a row last night and tonight. Danny uh, now has uh, seven points in the ballgame. Nine points in the ballgame for Ainge. And the Celtics are back up six again. They're back up eight, rather. 97-89. Eight-point lead. And we're going to get a whistle and foul. Oh, Parrish hit the deck. Parrish he, however, foul. is going to be called for fouling Jack Sickman. That is Robert's fourth personal foul and the fourth on the team. Let's take a look at it. He goes for the Sigma fake. We told you in the first half, anytime he, you go inside to Sigma, he turns quickly, gets it over his head. You must respond to that fake. What you don't want to do is over respond, which that time is what uh, Robert got caught into because this gave Sigma the opportunity to take it in under him and of course pick up the foul. All right, Williams for Seattle. And now Freddie Brown. Johnson trying to play him as tightly as a glove. Well, Freddie's the guy that brought them back yeah. a lot of time in the last second situation. He's got that kind of potential. And Williams obviously also can do it. Five minutes to go. Celtics leading by six points. Celtics have led since very early in the first quarter. And getting it to Bird. Larry's fall away. Pops in. 
26 points for Larry Bird. The defense was there that time, but it didn't matter because Bird just leaned away from it. Denver has beaten the Lakers at Los Angeles. Denver 141 to 138 winners there. King low, no, rebound McHale. Celtics not allowing the Sonics any second shots here in the fourth quarter, Coop. Well, that's where you win basketball games. In the trenches, under those boards. And as we said on top, this is where the Celtics had a decided advantage. It should result in a win, but I'll tell you, see, I hope not quitting, obviously. Williams misses the shot. Rebound the corner to Dennis Johnson. Four minutes to go. The Celtics leading at 99-91. Problem with... You know, relying on those outside shooters, no matter how effective they are, Freddie Brown and Gus Williams are both shooting 50% from the field. It's still coming down the stretch. At this point in the game, the team is going inside, that's controlling that, uh, those backboards. Nine times out of ten, I'd say, you know, they're going to come out of here with a W. All right, uh, Chambers is back in for Seattle. And Al Wood is back in as well. Gus Williams goes out for the Sonics, along with Reggie King. McHale had been fouled by Hawes, which was his third personal, and Seattle is well over the limit. So McHale is shooting a pair. Kevin has never missed a game, by the way, in his NBA career. Randy Smith, watch out. 337 and counting for Minnesota Kevin. There's the brain trust. AC and Jimmy Rogers. Ray Melchiori, crack trainer. It's 101 to 91. Celtics up by 10. Listening in on us all night. Don't know who you can trust in this way, good. Huh? All right, there's Brown with Ainge on him top. Celtics leading 10. They go to Sigma. Tough weak side rebound by McHale. Ball to the floor and into the hands of Bird. Boy, I tell you, McHale did a, a real That's heck a, of a job off the boards that time. That brings the coaches up off the bench. I'll tell you, coaches can get emotionally involved. Yeah, they were that time as well, you know. Bird has got chambers on him. This is where Bird went wild in the first half. Oh, and look wow. at that. Larry Bird has now got 30 points in the ball game. And Chambers got to be talking to himself right now because he did everything he possibly could that time. There is. He taught that kid a lesson. I'm sure Scott Weapon is pleased about it because uh, James yeah. was the one Scott got into. Into a lip. All right, Johnson for the Celtics. Now leading by 12 with just under three minutes to play in the game. The Celtics have really come on tough here in the fourth quarter. Rebound deep to Parrish and the Celtics with another 24 seconds to go on the shot clock. I tell you, Larry's so cool, boy. He, he gets a, a kid like Chambers on him, but he knows he can manipulate him. He's beautiful. <laughs> Watching him operate on a guy. McHale will be going to the foul line, but right now the Sonics have called for a timeout. With two and a half minutes to play in the game, the Celtics, a strong fourth quarter, are back up again by 12. Santos and Bob Cousy here at the Kingdom in Seattle, where with two and a half minutes to play in the game, the Celtics are leading 103-91 in Coos. The Celtics have just played an outstanding basketball game here tonight. They okay. really have. I'm impressed. They've bounced back from that tobacco on Sunday against Philadelphia extremely well. There were a lot of questions being asked as to whether, you know, they were starting to lose it uh, after a pretty good first half of the year, but uh, they've been well tested here on the West Coast, which is anyone who follows the NBA knows is not the easiest the battle of challenges. Is challenges and uh, boy they've responded very well first in Oakland last night and coming in here to Seattle where they've never had much success other than the third quarter they've controlled this game very effectively right now the Celtics with their biggest lead 14 points Bird has had a phenomenal game another triple double for Larry Bird as he's had double figures in all three categories Every foul called here on Dennis Johnson at this point in time, with 2.20 to go, Bird has 30 points, 13 rebounds, and 13 assists. And that's coming off 17 assists last night in Golden State. That's too bad a nice guy. Such a great player. Wood gets the nice bounce, drops it in. 105-92 with 2.20 to go. Celtics will improve their record to 41. 12 tonight, which will be two games better than they were a year ago at this time in the one and loss column. And uh, 
will keep their lead at seven and a half games over Philadelphia. The Sixers won tonight beating New Jersey at home. Now to seven seconds on the shot clock. Parrish on the turnaround rainbow brought water down from the sky on that one and a rebound to Al Wood. And Celtics and a whistle as we have a collision right in front of us between Wood and Bird. The Celtics took the lead for good in this game. Uh, 4-18 to go in the first quarter at 20-18. to That is good call. Larry didn't quite get in there on time. Wood was trying to uh, establish a three-point uh, position there, and I think Bird knew it. He wanted to keep him out of there. This is not the time in the game, however, old-timer, to, to get yourself hurt. Not after no. what you've just done tonight, and with less than two minutes left in the game, pretty well in hand. One more free throw for Al Woods. North Carolina gets them both. Well, the Celtics took the lead for good with 4.18 to go in the first quarter at 20 to 18, and they have not trailed since then. Sonics got it down to one point in the third quarter, but that was as close as they've come since the first quarter. All right, Larry. Now to Dennis Johnson. Larry again. Little up fake. And how do you do? A two. Oh, good. I'll tell you, Earl Chambers isn't going to get much sleep tonight. He's going to have to be having Larry Bird nightmares. Bird with a steal to go along with everything else he's done. Ahead to Dennis Johnson. The Ainge. And Danny doesn't hit it. 107 to 95 with 112 to play in the game. Chambers, after several moves and an offensive foul on Tom Chambers. Bird has got him so frustrated. You know, the kid hangs in, give him credit for that. Uh, he's got ability, but not when it's matched up against uh, the best player in the league. Ainge with the basketball for the Celtics. We're under a minute to play, and the Celtics are going to come out of Seattle with a very strong win tonight. Here's Larry. He's got 32, looking for 34. He is knocked to the floor by Tom Chambers. Chambers for the foul. That'll be all for Chambers, I believe. Well, that's six that they called on him, and I saw about three others that were well, missed. Certainly the Wedman. Hey, he's a chopper, I'll tell you that. He is a chopper. At the line, Larry Bird with a couple of free throws coming. Here comes Greg Kite into the ball game. A satisfying win for Dennis Johnson, I'm sure, also. Dennis, we told you the story, but, you know, the controversy supposedly was that he was shooting too much and was averaging 19. He's got 18 tonight, by the way. Uh, four, yeah, four over his average. So if he gets one more, it's a little irony there. Because he's gotten close to what he was averaging. Now he just came out of the ball game. Parrish and Johnson both out. Kite and Clark in for the Celtics. 33 points for Bird, matching his uniform number. One more shot for Larry. Boy, has he had a night. Brooks Lick, Indiana's pride and joy, makes it 34 points, 13 rebounds, 13 assists. with 40 seconds to go. Carlos Clark, who's been seeing some action here and there, along with Kite. There's Greg Kite. Now Bird getting it to McHale, and the Celtics is playing at four corners. Ainge, no, the rebound to Wood. Downtown, Freddie Brown. Three points. Was a two-pointer, not a three-pointer. He was just over the line. Well, it's 109 to 100 with 10 seconds to go, and that's going to be the final score. As the Celtics are, that's not going to be the final score. Ainge is fouled by Brown, and so Danny Ainge will go to the line with four seconds to play in the basketball game. But Larry Bird has led the Celtics to their second win in a row and third in the last four games. After hitting a little dry spell, the Celtics lost uh, two out of three. They've now won three of their last four. Ainge is in double figures now. He's got the 10 in the ball game. And he's got another one for 111 to 100. With two seconds, there it is. It's all over. The Celtics win it by 11. A very solid win here tonight in Seattle where the Celtics took the lead in the first quarter, 20 to 18, and never trailed again. The final score, the Boston Celtics 111 and Seattle 100. <laughs>